1540. I hope everybody is staying safe and staying sane. Key point on staying sane. <laughs> but, um, I mean, seems like things are starting to look up a little bit, at least here in Utah. So I don't know whether or not that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing um, with all of the kind of the safety concerns lifting a little bit and quarantine possibly being um, a little less chaotic. I don't know. We'll see what, I guess we'll see how, how things go. This is a pretty crazy time, but it's a great time to be learning about respiratory. So I am excited that you all are here. Um, I One of these days I'm going to figure out how to record my face and my voice at the same time, but as you can tell right now, it's just my voice again, which is fine. It's totally fine. We're going to make it work. Um, I was just responding to most of your, um, those of you who had posted for discussion um, this previous week about going on and researching the AARC website and just kind of checking out the resources that are available to you there and some of the articles, the job listings, um, the students page, which is fantastic, especially when you're in the program and it's um it's just, it's, it can be very overwhelming sometimes. So the AARC website is a great resource for students and medical professionals and lay people alike. So we are going to jump right in. It's a relatively short lecture for this week. Um, we are going to be talking about the professional organizations that exist in respiratory care as a respiratory professional. So we're going to go ahead and get started with these five... Um, respiratory associations. You do have an assignment that is associated with these. I hope you um, go ahead and it probably would be better actually if you went ahead and took a look at that assignment first just so you are aware of what's expected um, for that and then possibly taking notes throughout this um, this lecture as well so that you will be able to complete that assignment and kill two birds with one stone really. So let's go ahead and jump in. There are five main organizations in respiratory care. You have the American Association for Respiratory Care, the AARC, which was the website that you guys were researching and getting familiar with, which is the, na this is the National Oversight Professional Association for um, respiratory care in the United States. Then we have the Commission on Accreditation for Respiratory Care, COARC, for short, this is the, um, the organization that accredits schools. So if you are like planning to pursue respiratory care and planning to apply to the respiratory program, you'll hear this quite a bit as you're going through the program. Oh, these are requirements for accreditation. These are things, there's certain requirements that you have to, um, to meet based on this COARC accreditation system that Weber State specifically has to meet in order to maintain their accreditation. So this is the organization that um, makes sure that we're meeting those that accreditation and that we are um, compliant and um, they allow for us to be able to graduate. So they're pretty pretty big deal. Then we have the National Board of Respiratory Care. This is where you, the MBRC, they are MBRC for short, National Board for Respiratory Care. They are the credentialing body, as it says, they are the ones who write your testing. So as a respiratory student, throughout the whole program here at Weber State, we study from day one on how to pass your boards. And um, the respiratory, the MBRC, this National Board for Respiratory Care, are the ones who write the board exam. So, um, yeah, they're pretty important, pretty big deal, um, and they they write great exams. They they really do. I'm I'm knee deep right now in in the works of trying to study for that exam. So um, it's a love hate relationship I have with the MBRC at the moment. Um, then we have the Utah Society for Respiratory Care. They're the ones here in Utah that are specific to um, respiratory. They you more than likely will meet um, some of the leaders. Some of the leaders for this USRC actually are are a part of the Weber State program, and um, they are those who lobby for um, change here in Utah related to respiratory care, um, concerns on Capitol Hill, 
Uh, they actually do a lot of work here stateside, so they're a pretty interesting organization. And then we have the Utah Department of Occupation and Professional Licensing, which is where you receive your license to work as a respiratory care practitioner. So we'll go ahead and start off with the AARC and some of the things that they stand for. Like I said, they're the leading national and international professional association for respiratory care. They have three main um, goals champion of the profession, protector of the profession, and representative for the profession. So the champion for the profession, um, their goal, it says here, as is to, you know, advance the art and science of respiratory care through publications, standard developments, encouragement of research. They promote sponsors for continuing education. Um, they publish scientific literature, and they encourage and promote professional excellence. I, I feel like as you go through the AARC website, you can kind of, you can see these goals as you research um, just the sources that are available to you there on the website. You can see where, you know, they're advocating for art and science in respiratory care, where they're, where they're promoting scientific literature, where they're promoting the profession. Um, you can kind of see that these are their goals. So they're uh, moving forward with those goals. They're role of a protector. So they advance our professional agenda in Washington, D.C. They encourage and advice on state professional issues. They promote agenda based on what is best for our patients, and they advocate for patients and their families, public and professional. Advocate for patients and their families, the public and professionals. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, I attended um, a conference recently, well, a year or two, a year and a half ago, where they, um, the speaker at this conference was advocating for opioid overdose, not, not those who are abusing overdose or who are abusing opioids, but those who, who maybe had a simple surgery and are prescribed opioids for a day or two who are sensitive to opioids. Maybe, maybe they've never taken them before and they go home, they take their medication and they go to sleep and they don't wake up. They die. And um, this particular individual was lobbying for greater research and um, greater monitoring for these, these patients who have never taken opioids before. She had, this speaker had had two people in her family alone who had, um, who had died from this particular thing. And I think when we talk about the opioid crisis, we specifically think of those who are abusing medications. But very, um, very often, too, we have this situation where you are, um, you see patients that go home with, you know, they've never been on a medication like that before. They've never been through a surgery where they've needed it and they don't really have cause to be concerned so they don't continuously monitor them because they're fine they're healthy um but they go home they take their medicine when they're in pain they go to sleep and they die and it's heartbreaking because they're these healthy citizens and you know maybe they just went in for knee replacement and now they're dead and that's heartbreaking so um certain things like that where we're lobbying for our patients, we're, we're researching, we're trying to create um, better respiratory care for the future and practice best care principles. So um, this role of protector is alive and well as the AARC is moving forward. So we have representatives. These are participants. Part they participate in activities in which res respiratory therapists have interest, and they represent the profession with other organizations and agencies. So we have representatives um, from Utah. We have representatives from schools. We've got – there's representatives from all other – like all facets that come together at the AARC to talk about, you know, current issues and um, uh, topics related to respiratory care. Moving forward, we have this COARC. Um, they are, like I said, the accrediting agency for Weber State. They provide the the um, groundwork, essentially, for what constitutes an accredited um, respiratory therapy program. Um, more often than not now, this accrediting is given to bachelor's prepared respiratory therapists. Um, I remember the chairman for our program saying that there are very, very, very few 
I don't even know if there's any left in Utah, don't quote me on that, but who even do associates anymore. And that was the decision for Co from CoArc that that was where they're, that's where they projected the profession to be going, basing completely on um, bachelor's programs. So they're the ones who make that decision. The MBRC, they're the one who write the exams for all of these credentialing certifications. So they are hard at work trying to trick us, but make sure that we are <laughs> educated and prepared to take care of patients and not hurt anybody. So they're pretty important as well. They establish these standards. They provide valid, reliable credentialing exams. They're sponsored by the AARC and the National Society for Pulmonary Technology and three physician organizations. They work with state licensing boards and they are accredited by the National Commission for Certifying Agencies. Moving forward, we have the USRC, who they put on a conference every year, um, and if you proceed forward into the respiratory program, you will be required to attend that, uh, that conference. We, it was canceled this year for COVID, but um, the previous year, that is where this, that speaker that I was talking about, who's, whose family members were dying from from just one use of opioid sets where she was presenting this research was at the USRC conference and she was working with the USRC and AARC to try to figure out, you know, what in the world is happening with these patients who are dying from one-time use of opioids. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, they represent the profession at the state level and represent it in, at the national level like a, the Utah S USRC representatives move forward and represent Utah at the national level. Um, the AARC. I hope that makes sense. Sorry, that was kind of it, kind of confusing. Moving forward, you have to not only be registered and credentialed. You have to not only go through a credentialed program and then take your test through the MBRC, your board exams, and then you have your certification. But then you need a license from the Utah Department of Occupational and Professional Licensing as well, DOPL. So you have to have both your certification and your license to be able to work in public health. So they are the agency that safeguards public health, safety, and welfare. They're the same agency who provides, like, the licensing for electricians. They provide licensing for everybody. So um, they just, they have a website you go on and they... Go through, you go through the process, the application process, you renew your license through the same organization, and they're the ones who handle all of the licensing for the state of Utah. And then we have the Coalition for Baccalaureate and Graduate Respiratory Therapy Education. I haven't heard a ton about these guys, um, but they help students, faculty members, and the general public learn about baccalaureate and graduate respiratory therapy education in the United States. So short and sweet this week, those that's just kind of the overview of these organiza professional organizations that we will be learning about. Like I said, go ahead and review your assignment for the week before you listen to this. Um, I feel like it will be very beneficial to you to know what is expected of you and then to take notes as you go through this. But other than that, I hope that everybody stays safe and that you enjoy your week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye!